Welcome back to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. About a month and a half ago, after quite some waiting and anticipation, Star Wars provided official details about Star Wars The High Republic, which was previously referred to as Project Luminous. The project is a multimedia endeavor that will allow Lucasfilm and Disney to tell a cohesive story through different publishing outlets including Disney Press, Del Rey, IDW Publishing, and Marvel Comics. The High Republic stories will be told mainly in comics and novels novels, with the assumption that the High Republic will be setting the stage for Lucasfilm's next series of on-film Star Wars stories. This could possibly be the first set of films that will be coming out starting in 2022, although that date might be in question with all that's currently happening in the world. Nevertheless, the stories of the High Republic will be set in an era when the Galactic Republic and the Jedi Order are at their zenith, which is about 200 years prior to the events of Star Star Wars The Phantom Menace. The main antagonists at this point in galactic history will be the Nile, who have been described as space vikings which, hell yeah. Aside from that, we know that the stories being told in the High Republic will showcase some sort of cataclysmic event, possibly involving hyperspace travel and the Nile in the Jedi Order's response to that event. Courtesy of my man Charles Soule tweeting it out, StarWars.com has released some intriguing information and concept art on some of the characters that we'll be getting to know in various High Republic stories. I thought it'd be cool to talk about these characters and some of the information that we were provided. Per StarWars.com, the first character we're introduced to is the human female, the Var Chris. The Vark is the brightest, most notable example of Jedihood. She always tries to see the good in people and situations, and never puts herself first. She is invigorated about life on the frontier and the challenges it brings, and she is an inspiration for those who work with her. She's compassionate, not dogmatic, and is always ready to sacrifice herself over others. Avercris is the best of the best. The next character we get information on is the male Twi'lek Loden Greatstorm. Two things. What a goddamn name, and man do I love this Jedi's look. Loden is a Twi'lek Jedi Master and is considered to be one of the best teachers in all of the Jedi Order. Strong and wise, with a good sense of humor, Loden looks at every moment as a learning experience, always trying to better himself and those around him, especially his Padawans. Next up is the female human Keeve Trennis. Keeve is a young, firebrand Jedi, believed to have a great future ahead of her if only she would believe in herself. Quick-witted and more impulsive than she should be, Keeve has only been a Jedi Knight for a few weeks and is a little starstruck around Avar, knowing many of the great things Chris has done in the past. She is determined to prove herself to Avar and the other legendary Jedi stationed on Starlight Beacon. But first, she must learn to trust in herself as much as she trusts in the Force. We then get information on Stellan Geos, a male human who is an optimistic and well-respected Jedi Master. Stellan came up through the Order with Avar Chris, and although they are often on different assignments for the Jedi Order or the Republic, when the two work together, they are a powerhouse team of two noble heroes in action. Strong in the Force and a natural teacher, Stellan is currently stationed at one of the Jedi Temple outposts on the distant planet of Karagon Viner. How cool is that lightsaber? I love that lightsaber and the metal cross guard, guys. Lastly, we get the female Marillion, Vernestra Vern Rowe. Vern is a newly minted Jedi Knight who was a Padawan to Stellan Geos. She works hard and is devoted to the Jedi Order more so than most others her age. At 16, she is one of the youngest Jedi Knights in a generation. She struggles to fit in with the adults while also setting a good example for the younger Jedi. So a couple of thoughts about this information and the concept art that we've been given. I love the outfits of all of these Jedi their choices in attire really stand in stark opposition to the Jedi of the Clone Wars era, which were very bland and basic. The Jedi of the High Republic, however, are donning outfits that are far more luxe and fancy and really remind me of what you might see a religious leader in our world wearing. 
I'm curious if the minds behind the High Republic pulled from real-world religious organizations when creating the stories, characters, and world of the Jedi Order during the High Republic. Aside from the differences in the attire between the Jedi of the High Republic and the Clone Wars era Jedi that we've come accustomed to, I am very curious to see what the ideologies, practices, and maybe customs of the Jedi of the High Republic era might be and if they are going to differ from what we have seen in the Clone Wars era Jedi Order. In the prequel films and the Clone Wars animated series, we're seeing a Jedi Order that has very much lost their way. The High Republic, however, is supposed to be at the peak of what the Jedi Order should be. The first High Republic story that will be published comes out from our man Charles Soule, which is titled Light of the Jedi, and will be released on August 25th, which is supposed to be two days prior to the start of Star Wars Celebration. I'm so excited for us to start delving into the High Republic era. But what do you guys think? Do you like the designs and the background info on the characters we've been provided so far? What are you most excited for when it comes to the High Republic? Let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Follow Dan's On Fandoms on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr, all at Dan's On Fandoms. Thanks for watching, and stay nerdy.